Folks, I'm in Italy today. And I wasted some money. Baba da bibidi. Skibidi wop. It's a wolf cab winder. Let's talk about it. Hey folks, I'm Em. Welcome back. This check for today, wearing my reversal. Black dial today. So, first off, I appreciate anyone who subscribed to the channel so far. Thank you for your support. And again, we need to surpass FP Jordan subscribers. Well, they have five and a half K. We are almost at 700. It's gonna take a while, but we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm not in my usual studio these days, and the last video I tried to record with a shotgun mic, but I didn't really like how it came out. I'm trying with a lav mic today. Let me know in the comments if it's a better sounding. So yes, back to the watch finder. Uh, this is not the first time I've made such a mistake. I already own a Wolf watch winder. I think it's a Savoy model. Um, it's in the other studio. I'm putting it on the script right now. Uh, but it's a much bigger one uh, made of wood uh, with all, that also hosts three other watches on top. Very cool looking. Um, however, it's very big. And I have a little project in mind, so I wanted a littler one. First things first, what is a watch winder? So, first, first of all, it's an accessory. It's nothing that is uh, that I would consider necessary by any means for any collector, um, with one, one exception that we're going to go through in a little bit. So watch winders are little boxes that spin your watch around for an X number of rotations per day. This is so that uh, your automatic watches will stay charged throughout the days that you're not going to use them. That's it. That's all they are. Now, uh, as any accessories, uh, they do come in different grades. Uh, you can find the cheaper ones and the more expensive ones. This happens to be one of the, not, uh, well, let's call them more expensive, not as cheap uh, as a lot of them, of the other ones that you can find on Amazon, for example. So this is a Wolf. The name, the model name is Cub. It's a wolf cub because it's small, get it? I grabbed the cognac color one. Let's see what you get in the box. So you open this little puppy and you are presented with this. Don't know if you can see it. There's like a black pouch containing the watch winder itself. Uh, you get all the little power adapters. Um, this can run either on a four double A um, battery setup, or you can connect it through your mains um, with this adapter. And it comes with a lot of different adapters for different countries. Um, is this nap? Just connect your preferred power source. Next, a uh, little cardboard pouch. This contains uh, just your. Warranty card. Um, oh yeah, a little bit of history of Wolf. They started making watch accessories in 1834. Started by Philip Wolf the first. And I think now we are in at Philip Wolf the seventh, I think. Oh, um, you got a bridle cable configuration setup. You can daisy chain different cub winders if you want to. Could be useful in a stacked setup. And instructions. Eh. Moving on to the last box in the box, and it is the dynamic cuff. We'll talk about this in a moment. Let's take a look at the main attraction itself, the watch winder. There you go. You know, nice and compact, looking mighty cool. Love the color. On the bottom, you've got your double, the, your double A configuration. On the back, you've got your on-off switch and your AC connector. And on the front, you have this lovely little magnetic hinge that opens up. You've got your cuff that you can take out of the barrel. 
Now the barrel is what spins, this one gets attached to the barrel and spins with it. Take your watch cuff, you take your watch, work the watch through the cuff, easy. The watch is now locked in, you house it in this thing and just press play. Is it doing anything? Sometimes it just waits for like 10 seconds. It's waiting for 10 seconds. Yeah. Now, this is all it does. That's all it does. Just spins round and round and round and round and round. This achieves a few things. First of all, your watch is staying wound. It's cool. The second, most importantly, it looks super cool, I think. I think it's one of the best ways of displaying a watch, especially a single watch. I mean, well, now you're gonna just see reflections with this case on, or uh, maybe not, maybe I can make it work. But yeah, I think it looks beautiful. It's very mesmerizing just to look at it spin. I did spend a lot of time just be like, uh. Now, the suggested retail price for one of these things is about, it's slightly, less, slightly under $400. I think 380 or 390. Well, considering you can get similar looking boxes and um, with similar functionality, not the same, but similar uh, on Amazon for like 100 to 150 or even less. Why does this cost a lot? First of all, it's a name brand. Uh, again, Wolf has been creating accessories and high-end accessories at that um, from the 1800s. Second, they say the materials, it's vegan leather. I mean, it's plastic. It's, it's very, very nice plastic, but they do have a few patents on how this works. I think the cuff locking mechanism is a patent as well as how the motor is calculating the rotations per day. In their marketing, they say it's the only one on the market that actually counts the rotations per day, but nah, you can, you can find others that do it. Maybe it used to be true. Um, nowadays, uh, a lot, you can find a lot of them for cheaper uh, that let you set up the amount of turns you want done per day. Now, the basic functionality is as soon as you turn this on, it starts spinning for a few minutes, then it stops, turns the other way around, then it stops, waits. So the spring can unwind a little bit and then it starts all over again. So it's ideally made not to overwind the main spring. For almost 400 retail suggested price, I would have expected to be able to choose a program. Not all watches um, wind bidirectionally. Um, not all watches want the same amount of winds per day. I don't know, you can find cheaper models that will let you set the turns per day. But do you need to? Like, do you really care? Now, having fallen for these things twice, I think I can call myself an expert here. The only real use case that you might have than a purely aesthetic accessory for your watch is if you happen to have a like perpetual calendar, an automatic perpetual calendar. That is a night that also needs to be a complete nightmare to set up and restart if it loses track of time. In, uh, and I mean, and if you spend that amount of money, so like it's, you got an automatic perpetual, you know, probably you spent north of a hundred thousand pounds or more. You probably don't mind spending 200, 300 pounds, 400 pounds for one of these little things. In all the other cases, you don't need it. It's a pretty looking thing. If you just want it for the looks of it, for example, I, I'm probably gonna, this thing is gonna spend more time uh, turning non-automatic and just manual watches just for the looks than spinning actual automatic watches. So if, you only, if you're only looking for it to be pretty, uh, pretty much like I do, um, then of course you're free to try the Wolf Cup, but do look around on Amazon for the cheaper ones you might find one that you really like the looks of and costs you a fraction of these. 
Now, another good reason to choose the Wolf one um, is their dynamic cuff um, technology, which, hey, technology. It's a pillow for your pillow at different sizes. However, uh, they patented it, so good on them. Uh, basically, the idea is that you have different size watches, a small watch would hardly fit on this cushion, even if squeezed to the maximum. Uh, for example, my Vacheron Constantin does not fit comfortably uh, in my other one that does not have the dynamic cuff. However, on this one, and here comes the other one that was in a little pouch, you get this. One, two, three. And you can just compose them. So you've got the largest one, the medium, and the smaller, right? So for something like my Tissot PRX, I go for the large. For example, uh, with my BC automatic, um, I am going to put on, put it on the medium, which is for the deep bottom, which made here. Now I happen to need the actual small one then. Let's go with the small one and just tighten it up. But you can see like the utility, like this is an actual useful thing. Um, so you don't need to resize your watches really just to be able to put them into your watch finder. There you go. In it goes. So different size cuffs for different size watches, which I think is very useful. Is it worth it? Now, if you have expensive watches to put in this, I would say yes. I think at least you can find an excuse to, to buy one. If you're gonna use this to charge one of these, to actually charge them, just not to show them, don't do it. This is almost the same price as this. You know, just go buy a Seiko. And this does 900 turns per day. That's it, that's the only program that you can choose from. Well, folks, let me know down in the comments what do you think of Watchwinder? Do you have one? Do you plan on having one? So, why? Do you think there are useful accessories? Please consider leaving a like if you've enjoyed this video and thanks for joining. See you in the next one, folks.